If you're being sued by the original creditor or a debt collector, watch the entire video. I want to help you because I understand that not everyone got access to the information that I know and what I teach my students. So I want to give you all some free sauce so you can go ahead and implement, get your wins, have a high income uh, potential, potentially a high income skill for you and, you know, people around you. So, yeah, let's get straight to it. So I want to give you all a scenario. So the scenario is, let's say the original creditor tries to sue you in small claims court or even federal court, right? It don't matter. This is the thing that they don't want people to know. And I'm going to let you know. Remember, none, and none of what I'm saying is legal advice. If YouTube Peyton take the video down because I'm giving y'all sauce, hopefully y'all watch the video in time and take action. But basically, this is what may happen. And this is how my students and I are able to successfully dismiss court cases. So you got to understand what's going on. You got to understand that the contract that's in place, it might have an arbitration clause that doesn't allow the original creditor or even the debt buyer to sue you in small claims or federal court, you or the client. So when I'm talking about the original creditor, I'm talking about big banks. And I'm not going to mention any of them, but I'm talking about people like, you know, you got y'all know that that company, right? So those guys, like the AE people, you feel me? So just keep that in mind. People like them, people like the debt collectors, et cetera, right? So let's go deeper into the scenario. Let's get more specific. Let's say your client being sued, you or your client being sued by someone like these people for credit card debt. Let's say it's uh, $3,589.32. You know, they serve the papers and everything. A lot of people in the scenario, they'll be super scared. Oh, what do I do? Number one, obviously, you want to respond. We're going to get into that. But the main thing I want you all to realize and remember, when you're going through this scenario, they may have an um, arbitration clause that says that they have to go, they have to try to go through arbitration first before they go into federal or small claims court, right? And having access to this information is very, very powerful. You may or may not have seen the video I did with my student, uh, Gary Branch. We were just talking about how he was able to dismiss multiple cases for his clients. And he joined our 10K mentorship. And this is where he got, you know, the information. He had his own twist to it as well. But I say that to say, please don't sleep on this information. Because I'm giving y'all, like, information I only give to my 10K mastermind people, right? So... I need y'all to hopefully take action on what I'm saying. I know 99% of y'all not going to do nothing with it. But at the end of the day, I could live my legacy knowing that I did give y'all the sauce. If you fumbled it and your kids, your future kids hate you because you decided not to listen to someone that has results and all of that, then, you know, that's on you and your family. But, yeah, so this is an example, again, of uh, Gary. You see, he got lawsuit dismissed. And it goes back to everything I'm telling you about here, right? So don't overcomplicate the process. I'm going to tell you what I would specifically do. Remember, everything is not legal advice. I'm just going to tell you what I would specifically do as someone that's helped, you know, people get um, what's their case dismissed, you know? So keep that in mind. I've helped Gary help multiple people, multiple people get, you know, their cases dismissed. So I just want y'all to realize, like, when something's in front of you and it's undeniable, it gets to a point that, I mean, you can hate on somebody, but it's like you can't deny results. You feel me? So if you a hater or not, use my information in private to go help your family. I don't care if you give me credit or not, but do something with the information. That's just what I would like. So I want you to ask yourself, does this company, like these people, do they have an arbitration agreement, arbitration clause, whatever, right? That's what you want to ask yourself. And do your due diligence. Don't ask me stupid questions. Go ahead and Google. Do they have, you know, the arbitration clause, arbitration agreement? So I'm going to go into what I would personally do in a particular scenario. So hopefully this helps y'all. And, you know, like I said, you could go ahead and bless your family and bless everyone around you. So for me personally, this is what I would do, right? I don't want to reveal everything. Hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, hold on. Hold on, I got y'all. Okay, so I would basically, this is what I would do. I would get the company for breaching the contract with uh, the client, or if it's you, get them for breaching the contract. Because remember, the contract says, if, it, they, if the arbitration agreement says they have to try to go through arbitration before they go to court, right? 
So did they did they not breach it? So that's what you want to operate off of, right? So I would try to do that because, like I said, these arbitration clauses, sometimes they say that they have to try to do that first before going through a small claims federal court. So when it comes to your actual response, I got to repeat multiple times. This is not legal advice. This is all entertainment purposes. For entertainment purposes, I would deny all allegations, line by line, every single line, deny all allegations. That's not legal advice. This is entertainment. So I would deny all allegations in response to the lawsuit, you know, of you or your client being sued. And I would enforce that. While what I would say would be, um, I would I would claim the plaintiff breached the contract with the defendant due to the arbitration clause, right? That's entertainment purposes. That's not legal advice. Then I would attach the company's arbitration clause. So them people, right? I would attach your arbitration clause as well, right? Entertainment purposes. Then I would get a copy of the credit card agreement as an exhibit and send that to both the court and the plaintiff that's suing. Plaintiff could be these people. It could be a debt collector. You know, it depends on the scenario. So we're talking about all this, right? But what is the FD? What's the FDCPA law that backs us on this claim that they can't sue the client? We got to go to the FDCPA. We're in 15 USC 1692 E. So this is a false or misleading representation section. The specific law. I think there's one in uh, 1692 F as well, but I want to just make it simple for them. So the threat to take any action that cannot legally be taken or that is not intended to be taken. Doesn't that sound like what I was just explaining right now? Right. So number one, hopefully y'all got from this video the importance of what it is to invest in yourself. Because like my 10K students, they already know all this information. You may be watching this. Maybe you never made an investment yourself. Maybe you're, all this information is new to you, you know? But I'll say that to say, you know, just dropping free sauce for y'all. And hopefully y'all take advantage of it. Um, I know most of y'all lazy. Most of y'all not going to do nothing with the information. Most of y'all just going to look at it as entertainment and not, you know, help your family move forward. But to the 1% person that is going to take action with the information, God bless you, right? God bless all y'all, but God bless you. That's taking action. So one thing you got to remember too, you may be able to both dismiss the lawsuit and also counter suit for that violation, right? The 1692 E5 that we talked about. So just watch the video, I guess, and just pause and do what you need to do, you know, take your notes and everything. I don't know if I went through it too quick just because, you know, I've been doing this for a while. I know if you're new, all of this may be like weird jargon, but yeah, it is what it is. And one thing I want y'all to understand too, right? I understand that you may be working at scamming as nine to five. That's cool. The people that I serve, we are business owners. If we're working a scamming as nine to five, we're working towards transitioning out of that scamming as nine to five. What does that mean? I need you to think like a business owner. Think like a boss. Do not DM me like I'm your, your uh, nine to five coworkers, right? Do not DM nobody like you're a nine to five slave. You know what I'm saying? So what do I mean by that? I mean that I just gave y'all a high income skill. So what would you do, right? Somebody that's not stupid would perform this skill successfully a number of times, get comfortable with it, track your data, and now you're making money helping other people. I literally gave you all this for free, you know? So if you decide to fumble it, like someone that's fumbling the game winning shot, fumbling, I don't even watch football, but fumbling the football stuff, then that's on you. So hopefully this video is helpful. Continue watching my videos. It'll help y'all get to the next level. Only if you take action. With that being said, y'all have a blessed one.